hello. I am here. Hello, hello. You know, while listening to that song, I kind of thought that the... I don't know what instrument it's supposed to be. But one of the instruments in there sounds like it's clicking, like it's mouth cl mouse clicking. Kind of makes it perfect for this stream, I think. Given that, well, you know, I haven't actually heard heard the stream back before, but I imagine that you hear the clicking sounds. You must. You must. I remember during like video calls at work, uh, people would, yeah, they've definitely been able to hear the clicking sounds before. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Probably not a good sign that music has a thing that sounds like a, a mouse click, right? Like, maybe that's actually a horrible criticism of the song. I have no idea. I like the song, though. I really do like that song. So, we've got some work to do. Um, but, if I could, in theory, get through this whole list, and I'm sure I'm going to find some other things to add to it, but... If I get through this to-do list, I could actually publish it. Wow. Uh, I really think that is going to happen either today or tomorrow. I haven't decided what I'm going to do as far as streaming after this project, though. Like, realistically, uh, I should be going and streaming my uh, my rhythm game. Because this, this whole project was sort of just... Uh, just something to sort of ease me into and build the habit of streaming without uh, starting on a project that's actually really hard to to do coding on because you know it's like 10,000 lines of code uh, and it's a big thing whereas this even though it is getting pretty big what are we at now gosh we're almost 2,000 lines of code uh, even though this thing is getting pretty big, well, I mean, if you add these together, it's probably a little bit more. Um, pretty much nothing compared to the complexity of the rhythm game. Although it is interesting. Oh, I made the thing beep um, while I was fiddling with it. It is interesting, though, that like my rhythm game, the UI just takes it's like 50 percent of the work and 50 percent of the code it's totally absurd quit beeping quit beeping relax it's a heart rate monitor just sitting on my desk i have no idea why i started fiddling with it um yeah so so anyways uh i'm tired of talking about that let's do let's do a feature right uh can we make the volume slider do volume things that's what i kind of want to start with so it, yeah, it'd be cool if I could go down this list vertically because I've forgotten like a like a like a difficulty approximation for these things. Totally forgotten, and I don't want to bother staring at it to figure it out. So let's open that up with Live Server. Oh, okay, sweet. Yeah, here it is. Here's the thing. The window is a bit uh, wonky. The window's a bit wonky. There we go. Yeah, we want the console up there. Maybe make it a little bit wider. Yeah, that's pretty good. Uh, okay, so here's the options menu so far. Wow, it's looking good, man. It's looking good. Click the circle, the circle thing shows up. Click the path options, the path thing shows up. Honestly, this is ready to ship if it weren't for the fact that that broke everything and made it look horrible. Yeah. Okay, now we just gotta make the volume slider do volume things. Let's see. Um, so I want to come over here. Actually, okay. Get rid of these config files. Get rid of that. Might need that again. Leave that open. 
Okay, we've done this stuff many times before, haven't we? Yeah. Yeah, so we need to like, oh, what is this? On input? I think on input for range stuff. On input equals There we go. There we go, and we pass this as well, so we can just do like input dot get value as number. Maybe I give this a label as well, right? Do I put the label after? Well, you put the label after for radios. No, you don't put the label after. What should the default value be? I have it set to 0 0.1 right now. So maybe, <laughs> maybe I should leave it that way. Oy vey. Where is this going to be positioned? Huh. Oh yeah, I remember. I think I put this in here before and it like broke stuff. That'll be fun to figure out. Can't wait for that. Anyways. I think I'll put it near the top. No, I want it back. <laughs> oh, excuse me. Uh. Yeah, I've got a volume variable here, right? Yeah, woo, okay. So, in order to follow the convention I'm using here, I'm gonna do that. Uh, except we're not going to do this. We're going to do uh, get input value by ID. I think that's what it's called. Yeah. Does this have error handling of any kind? No. But does it need to? I Probably not. It probably doesn't need to. Who cares? Okay. And then this is already in the right place, right? Yeah. But now we have to test it, don't we? And the max step point oh one.
Okay. Yes, as it was foretold, the volume label has broken everything. But that's fine. That's not what we're trying to test right now. That's a problem, right? Because if I do this and then this, it will work. Oh boy. Okay. Ha. Ha. Um. So. Wait, why doesn't it show me? This shows me the references to it? Why doesn't it show me that it's used here? It's used right here. How is that not a reference? I don't know, that's weird. This needs to have different behavior depending on whether we've gotten to this point yet or not. Okay. Let's say hypothetically though, we had set everything up correctly. And we were like, uh, let gain node gain node and then oh interesting that's on file select Does that work? That's basically what I want to check now. Is it it does does the uh, does web audio even allow you to change the gain on a gain node dynamically? I think the answer is going to be yes. We love it. Ooh, there's audio clipping and weird stuff happening too. I love it. That's perfect. Okay. So to actually imp <laughs> to actually implement this feature correctly, though, I need to, if I'm assigning the gain to a gain node that may or may not exist. Oh. <laughs> Or what if I'm assigning it to like the old gain node or some weird crap? I don't know. <sighs> Allow switching. Uh, to a new song. 
somehow. Yeah, that's an important thing as well. Oh boy, that's like a whole other set of features, isn't it? Okay, I can't do that. There's going to be so many other things. So like, uh, this is another classic problem with the fact that we're not using an immediate mode UI. It's not like I can just say like, oh, hey, you know, on this next frame, when you're drawing the play button, um, take this Boolean thing into account. No, I have to be like, oh, hey, whenever you change the state of this variable, you have to go and call, the, you have to do this, like, listener thing. It's like, oh, make sure to notify all the listeners that this variable has changed. And that's really obnoxious, because it's very easy to forget something like that. Whereas instead, you could just, if, you know, if this was immediate mode, I could just go like, oh, hey, here's where the play button is being drawn. Let it change its... Uh, the way it's drawn conditioned on this variable and boom it's done it automatically gives you the listener stuff Ugh, hate non-immediate mode okay so um like to do uh Should I make this into a... Um, I'm going to move this to where playing is. Where is playing? This guy should probably be here. Uh... Did I not... You're not gray anymore, right? No, okay. That was weird. <clears throat> I should probably merge these guys and not use a boolean, but instead use an enum that has three possible states, which is like um, not ready to be played, ready to be played, playing. Something like that. And maybe there's a fourth state called paused or something. I don't know. I should probably do that at some point as well. But that's, we're just trying to get the gain node working right now. Come on, man. Okay. Yeah, so it's like, what happens when you change the volume 
but it's not ready to be played. If song, song ready to be played, then you can go ahead and mess with the gain node. Equi equivalently, we could probably be like, if gain node is not undefined, but then you have the problem of like, well, what if somebody wrote to the gain node, but now that data is stale, this flag is really the, the thing that we want to use as the, uh, the thing to indicate if it's real, if it's a good time to be messing with it. Yeah, cool. Then maybe we have to come back and change this to like, if song is ready to be played or is playing or is paused, then you could mess with the gain node. Something like that. Yeah, we might have to do that. Okay, but that should be should be all good now, I think. Right? That should work. So currently I can do this. And that's an unrelated error message. And it doesn't explode. Huh, I picked another song. What's happening right now? <laughs> oh, that's weird. Ooh, that's weird. I don't know what I did, but I have a feeling that it was, it was like showing the stuff from a different song. Ooh, that's weird. <clears throat> okay, but that feature is done. The volume does volume. It doesn't look good at all, because like the volume label is like elsewhere. Okay, do I want to fix that right now? Where I've got some style for it, I assume, right? So if I've got a label on it, why don't I give this a div and then position the div around? Wouldn't that make sense? Question, what do I name my divs? Okay, the classes are just options menu option. So I'm going to do that and be like Maybe I do this. There's no width or anything, so let's see what that looks like. Did that, did that, what did that do? It's up here at the top left somehow. That doesn't make any sense. What are you doing up there? <clears throat> Okay, there's no styling in the HTML, right? So it all must be happening. Oh wait, no, that fixed it. Okay, I just hadn't hit save on the HTML. Oh, it's like off center. Oh, that hurts to look at. Here, you can watch while I fiddle with this. Yeah. 
Yeah, that's approximately okay. Yeah, that's tolerable, I would say. Good. Cool. Shift the options menu down a bit. Okay, how do I deal with that? Uh, okay, I think I know. There's like, um, there's margin and then there's padding, right? One of them is inside the object, the other one is like outside the object. So let me, I think that's the answer here, right? Let me fiddle with that. Options menu div, width, height, left, top, um, padding, padding top 20px, save. I'm a genius, what can I say? Uh, 30px. Can I give this some padding left as well? I don't know, like 8px. Ooh, that looked bad. Oh, okay, that actually extends the, the width of it a bit. I did not expect that. Okay, if I use margin left. Okay, yeah, that sucks away the left side of it, which is not what I want. pretty good. Maybe I make this text a little bit bigger. It's fine. I think it's fine. If a number input is invalid, outline it in red. Maybe by adding and removing an invalid input class. Okay. That could be the solution. I think that's doable. Well, range can't be invalid, can it? Okay. Try that just for now. I'm. St I think actually, I just decided um, before I officially call this done. I want to.
do this first. Because if, if I'm gonna have, if I'm gonna start adding like color visual stuff and dark readers on, I'm gonna have to redo it. Yeah, I don't wanna deal with that. So let me try to, I will halfway implement this right now though and just see if this is the right direction. So I put you here and now let's see. Why does that just say option? Shouldn't it say options? There, fixed it. Oh no. <laughs> oh no. How did that happen? Oh my goodness. Okay. What have I gotten myself into? Right, now I remember. Uh, inner text. Yep. Let's find like the hue multiplier, okay? Let's make that invalid and see what it looks like. <clears throat> oh, I put it on the label. That's silly. It should be on the uh, the input itself. Yeah, that's not terrible. It's act it's a bit much actually. Like it's a bit too red. Maybe we go for like a. like a darker red. Um, that didn't change it somehow? Okay, I have to refresh to get that particular change. I don't know why. Maybe a little bit brighter red. What if we did like brighter red with some transparency? That seems passable. Gonna go back, remove that class. Okay. So yeah, let's turn off dark reader <clears throat> and see if we can fix the visuals now. Ugh, why is this? Oh, we need to change the height of the of this div. What is the height of my canvas? The height of my canvas is meant to be 800. So, oh no, this is, yeah, this is actually a recent thing. The height would need to be 800 minus 30 because I added 30 padding, so now 770. Fixed it, okay, what else? Okay, so I, I guess I start fixing this with like some global glasses. Um, like I, I want all of the text to be white. 
I actually might need to Google this a little bit. Change text color globally. Okay, I would do it in body. Ta-da! Did not change the button text. Oh dear. Okay, what if I do button color white? That did it! That did it! That did it! Okay, and then background. Background color black. Maybe I don't want black. Maybe I want like uh, a grayish. Add some padding to my buttons. Okay, I get to have four, and I want to make the left and right padding a little bit more, I think. Um, okay, if I make this 20, what happens? Okay, so that's the top padding. If I make this 10, uh, 20, what happens here? Okay, that's the right padding. So I assume this and this is what I want? Yeah. Can I make the text bold inside a button or is that silly? I think that's silly. Um, Font size? Large? Oh, that's a bit too large. Medium? I made it smaller. That's the same. That's better. Font 
style. Oh, there we go. Font style. Uh, font something. Font weight. Bold. Make the buttons bold. Yeah, look at that. It made the buttons bold. That's cool. I forget what I started out doing. I forget how this started. Um, can I make the input background color uh, dark? Let's try black and then also the input Color font like light text color should be white. Okay, yeah, that's good. That's good. That's good. That's good. Um, did that also? Okay, that kind of affected this guy, but not the <laughs> not that for whatever reason. Why? Couldn't tell you. Could not possibly tell you why. Can I change the font across the whole everything? Maybe I save that for later. This is basically pretty good, I think. Basically pretty good, although the background color should be a little bit transparent. Kinda can't tell. That doesn't look transparent. Hmm. No, that doesn't look transparent. Okay, there we go. Yeah, that's pretty good. Uh, can I style the slider thing? No? Uh, what do you call that? Can I Google that real quick? CSS how to style range slider. I don't care about cross-browser compatibility right now. Oh god.
The range input widget consists of two parts, the thumb and the track. Each one of these parts has its own pseudo class selector for styling with a vendor suffix for cross browser support. Okay. So I think that these, which I've copied, um, how do I say it applies to all of these things? Is it just like a space? I guess that's fine. So if I change the background color of this to, I don't know, black, and I save it, what happens? Nothing happens, because it's broken, and I was lied to. Um... It's probably because I did the, I specified the CSS wrong. I don't think you do space the one they do. Uh, CSS, how to apply same CSS for two classes. Comma. Yes, you do a comma. Okay. Undo, 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 undo. Can you, can you do, can you do multi-line stuff? Background color, black, save, refresh. No, that doesn't seem to have worked. Okay, let's try non-multi-line stuff. Refresh. Holy crap, dude, that's just not working at all. Okay, what if I remove the like Microsoft and the Mozilla one and just try WebKit slider runnable track, right? Does that work? That doesn't, okay, I'm styling the background color. Maybe I shouldn't be styling the background color, right? Maybe I should be styling, I don't know, the color. No, that doesn't work. Oh, this tutorial, help me. Let's see, background, just, not background color, just background. What? What? No, that didn't work. What? These guys just don't want to be styled. They really don't. They do not want to be styled. Oh, is it the quotes? Are the qu are these like really shitty quotes? Is that what's happening? Dude, oh my god, you gotta be kidding me. Oh, <laughs> I want to die because of shitty quotes. Okay. Does that magically work? No. Still no? Background color? 
I don't know why I'm refreshing. It shouldn't. It should work without refreshing. No, that didn't. Oh, gosh, dang it, man! Like, how do I? How do I style you? Tell me how to style you, please. Okay, I need a different tutorial than the one I'm currently looking at. Because CSS Tricks from 2014 seems to suck. What? Oh, I actually wasn't. I was on um, Nikita... NikitaHL.com from 2021, actually. Weird. You can't comma separate these types of selectors. Oh, you're so right, because CSS will drop the whole selector if it doesn't understand part of it. Oh, my goodness. So, okay. So, if I remove the parts of the selector that it likely doesn't understand, because it's like Mozilla and Microsoft stuff. Okay. And I save that. Ta-da! Okay. So this was the secret sauce. I had a quote problem because I copied and pasted the code and whoever web developed that particular thing, they weren't like, Oh, I hope my user is able to copy and paste my code, even though it's in a freaking like code block clearly designed to be copied. Oh my god, that's infuriating. Okay, so anyways, um, one problem is that this looks awful though. <laughs> it looks so awful. Oh, jeez. I don't I don't think there's any way to save it. That doesn't really help that much. Cuz it's so rect it's rectangular. Uh could I unrectangle it? Um CSS rounded rounded corners. Border radius. What are these in units of? Pixels? Okay. Ten PX. Let me get out my microscope. Jeez, what is happening here? Okay. Yeah. That's fine, I guess. Can I do like 20 pixels and see if that makes any difference? No, it does not.
so I can't decide if that just looks worse, honestly. Like, I kind of want to leave it in there just to prove, like, aha, I know CSS. I can style my sliders. I kind of don't care. I, yeah, I kind of don't care that much, if I'm honest. Alright, I'm going to leave it in there, but comment it out for now. And then maybe I'll come back to it. Okay. So this looks a. How, let's see. See, Dark Reader. <laughs> look at what Dark Reader does. Dark Reader knows how to style the sliders. Somehow. Dark Raider doesn't look that different, which is kind of good. Uh, can I change the background of the body? I think I want to do that. Some variation of gray is what I want. There you go. That's pretty good. Yeah, the text is slightly gray with dark reader rather than pure white can I manage that um, two twenty what do you think RGB two twenty everywhere Yeah. That's pretty good. Uh, maybe I give you give the options button. Um, nah, maybe the options button will just stay up there in the corner. I could move everything down a bit again. I think options menu div give it some more padding top. How about forty? Ooh, can I um, can I give the give it some? What do I have? I have padding left at eight pixels. If I give it padding right, because I just noticed that the the line under shared options goes straight to the right, and I don't know if I want that.
Yeah. And then reduce the width. A bunch. I like that. I think that's pretty good. Can't wait for it to not display properly on any browser except mine. Uh, okay. I claim now to have accomplished my goal of um, making it look good-ish when Dark Root is turned off. Yes. Okay, and now we can do this this whole thing about when it, when an input is invalid. When an input is invalid. So that's definitely a JavaScript kind of change. So it's, I'm trying to think like, which inputs do I need to do this on? It's the hue multiplier, min max line width, and the circle stuff. That's basically it. It's these, these three and then these two. Hmm. Yeah, min circle radius, max circle radius. Okay. Huh. So input dot class list. What is this thing? It's a um. Oh jeez. Oh, the fact that there's just like no primitives for the HTML stuff is so infuriating. What's a DOM token list? What can I do with it? Okay, it, it add remove contains, okay. 
throws a syntax error if one of the arguments is a empty string, throws an invalid valid character error if one of the arguments contains any ASCII white space. Okay, contains. So, um, okay, so I'm gonna come up here. There's no way, no real other way to do this. So I have to be like, let invalid input class equal this. I may change it at some point. And we just hope and pray that it aligns with the CSS. If it contains the invalid input class, um, Wait, does this it returns a boolean, right? Okay. If it contains the invalid input class, input dot class list dot remove invalid input class. Ta da. If it's false that it contains the invalid input class, you should add it. Very good. Style as valid. Style as invalid. It's a little bit more clear. <laughs> it's a little bit more clear what it's doing. Okay. So I come back up here, what I'm looking for, min radius. Min radius. Okay. If it's valid, then style as valid min circle radius. Uh, input. Uh, this is frustrating. I don't have the input handy. I don't have the input for it handy. Yes, I'll have to do document dug in one. Min, oops, min radius input. Quote it. Moving up my screen a little bit. Okay, document dot get element by ID min radius input. So question, uh, this doesn't have to be an input element, right? HTML element. Any HTML element will have that stuff, so it's fine. I shouldn't try to be over, overly specific when it's not, when there's no reason. Q offset is a slider, Q multiplier, however.
Okay. Yeah, it was just those one, two, three, four, five. It was just those five, so no big deal. <clears throat> okay. Style as valid max circle radius. Okay, that seems really good. Let's test it out a little bit. Okay. Good thing, good thing that these buttons still seem to work. Although, for whatever reason, when you click on the play button, it doesn't, like, go in and out, which is kind of lame. Maybe I fixed that. Let me make a note of that. Okay. That's not right. That's not right. Max radius can't be 20. Right, it's still actually set at 20. Okay, I guess that's okay. I guess that's fine. I could live with that. dash lane for some reason min line width is like ah this must be a password <laughs> i know i know how to deal with path passwords let me add it let me add it holy crap okay um 10 10 
Yep, that's pretty darn good. That's pretty darn good. Q multiplier zero. Ah. That's pretty good too. Fade effect off. Fade direction none. That looks very cool, I must admit. Okay, that feature's done though, I think. So, yeah, that's fantastic. Disable the play button until the song is actually ready to be played. Awesome. Uh, I'm feeling like a little bit stiff. I think I want to take a, a little break for a second. Maybe I maybe I stand up. I don't know. Yeah, I let me just take a take a minute real quick. Get, take a breather. Take a little break. That's not the break button. This.
Okay, I am here. Yeah, I don't know what's up with me. Maybe, uh... Maybe it's just like, uh... You know... Coding for an hour is... Really hard work. I have no idea. Oh. Now, uh, but I am standing up now. As in an attempt to, like... Improve my comfort level. But I just realized that that has made me significantly closer to the ceiling light. So let me actually go turn that off. Ah, much better. Okay. In about 20 minutes, I'm going to want to stop standing probably. Probably, because my legs are weak. But anyways. Oh, and yeah, now, now the audio of me talking is probably going to be a lot worse. But anyways, let's just do this, right? Let's disable the play button until the song is actually ready to be played. Okay, so we talked about this, right? My second monitor is kind of far away. We talked about this. We know we knew we were going to have to do this at some point. So... Right. Okay, so I think we just jump into making a, a song state enum. Call the first state. Okay, so a couple things can trigger a, a song state change, right? When you click the play button, that can trigger a change to the song state. And when you do that, in theory,
Where's the play button? Uh, I don't have a reference to it. It's because it's not an input, really. When does it switch to pause? When does it switch to pause? Um, yeah, it could switch to pause if you're hitting play for the first time. It could also switch to pause if you're hitting play after having paused it. So none or if it was paused and you're hitting play. What's the problem? This condition will always return false. Since ready, playing, paused, and none have no overlap. What are you crazy? Look, there's none right there. It's it's literally identical, dude. Oh. Huh? What is this complaint? I have no idea what that means or like why it's why it's telling me that this makes no sense what I should try to do is actually uh, a switch on song state
Okay. Actually, this should happen when ready. Not when none. You somehow click it when it's none. That's not good. <laughs> uh. Okay, yeah, it was mad at me because of like in the consecutive if statements somehow. I. Uh. Uh. I don't know. I did not understand that. Okay. When you click it when it's ready, you change it to pause. Also, when it says when it's paused, the text will display play. Pause? No. Stop? Quick Google time. <clears throat> Okay, I think stop actually does stop. I might be slightly reinventing the wheel, but that's fine. Audio control dot stop stops it, and I think you can start it afterwards. If you click the pause button, if you click the play button while it's paused, it will start it. Okay. then the only other thing that has to do with the audio the song being played is here so how it should work is when you select a file huh Yeah, basically when you click on file select, it should stop. And then when you select a file and it does the whole array buffer thing and it gets to here, um, 
this happens. And then song state is equal to ready and let's see, let's see, let's see. I mean, this is the only place where it happens in the code, so I don't know why I need a function for it, realistically. Get the play pause button. How do I disable a button again? Oh. Okay, disabled is just true or false. Cast it. Well, it's not. Uh, it's not an input element. It's an HTML button element. Yeah, basically it's only disabled in that brief time where you've selected a thing, but it hasn't finished um, loading it yet. It also should probably have the same effect as stopping. I think that's right. Not totally sure. Yeah, I wonder what it's gonna do with like the position in the song. Also, what happened? What happened here? Oh, okay, no, no, no I know what happened. <laughs> the CSS stopped applying to it because I changed its ID. Oh, it's broken already. Cannot read properties of undefined reading stop. Oh, I see. So. Oh, right, it's trying to stop something that doesn't exist.
Okay, what could it be? It could be playing or paused. It could be ready. So if you select the song while it's ready, Okay, let's do let's do the full let's do the whole switch case thing. Do we always disable the play pause button? Yes, I believe we do. Oh, holy crap, dude. Uh, can you believe this? Can you believe that each thing is not its own scope? Ah, I want to die. Uh. We just need to make sure to only call stop if the state is not none, I guess. Uh, I presume if the song state was already none, we probably don't need to set the inner text of the play button to play. Um, we do still need to disable it though, that's for sure. Okay, if the song state was ready, it would have already been play, so I don't think I need to do that. If the song state was playing, it would have said pause, so I definitely need to do that. If the song state was paused, it would have said play already, so I don't need to do this. This is so absurd. If it was playing, I definitely do need to stop the audio. If it was paused, well wait, if it's ready, no, I don't need to, why would I need to do that? Only if it's playing do I really need to bother calling dot stop, I think.
So these are the same. Ready and paused are the same. And then if I allow a little bit of redundancy, I can just move this up here. Okay, that's good. Holy crap. <laughs> that seemed unnecessarily complicated. What? It, what? Huh? Okay. Line 126. Cannot set properties of null. Null? Oh, I d that's because I changed the button ID. Cool. Except, except there's no visuals. And that doesn't work. Why doesn't that work? If I'm playing and I hit the button, ah. Would really like to know, oh, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. Right, because I didn't come over here to the draw. Holy cow, the UI. I didn't come over here to the draw function. I don't see why I can't keep drawing when it's paused. Well, that might be why. Failed to execute start on that, cannot call start more than once. Well, yeah, that's fair. 
because uh, the time thing is still going. Hmm. Can I fake it somehow? That'd be kind of cool, right? When you hit pause, yes, it should stop, but it should probably also, huh. Hmm. Oh, this is kind of a problem. Yeah, web audio, oh Jesus. Web audio does not like this at all. I have to agree that it's not possible to pause slash resume audio files with the web audio API. But I saw an example where they actually made it possible to pause and resume it. I mean, it, yeah. If it's possible to jump to your previous position. Okay, in current browsers, there are now suspend, as of 2015, there are now suspend and resume methods available for audio context. Oh. Yeah, I guess the problem is restarting it afterwards. Maybe. Oh geez, uh, suspend, I'm gonna try suspend and resume. So rather than calling stop, dot suspend, no? No, apparently. I, uh, I'm calling it on the wrong thing. JavaScript web audio suspend. Audio context dot suspend. Suspends the progression of time in the audio context, temporary halting hard audio hardware access. 
It's useful if you want an application to power down the audio hardware when it will not be using an audio context for a while. Oh, geez. This really seems like what I shouldn't be using. <laughs> that is not my use case at all. been messaged I've been messaged oh hey <laughs> I messaged you got I finally saw your message will oh my god I was ignoring chat hi hello hi what's up <laughs> dude I was just like in the zone you have no idea Uh, okay. Yes, I'm fixing it, as you can see. Audio context dot resume dot suspend. So the weird thing about suspend is that it's an asynchronous thing. Uh, <sighs> So it's like not really paused until it's done suspending. Oh my god. Let's see what this does, this horrific thing. How long ago was, was your chat message from? <laughs> how long was I ignoring you for? I don't think it tells me. It doesn't want to tell me. I have no idea how long you've been waiting for me to look at your message. Um, I don't even know if you're still here. Let's pick a song again. Let's unmute the site, okay. And then what happens if I click pause? That's pretty good. Yeah, that's pretty good. Now what I suspect will happen is if I hit pause and play too many times quickly, something horrible will happen. Other than the audio sounding terrible, surprisingly no. Surprisingly no. cool is that? That's actually very cool.
Does this U multiplier do anything? <laughs> It does seem to be doing things. But like barely, you know? Okay, where'd, where'd my thing go? So that's great. Now though, what happens when we pick another file? That's approximately what should happen. That's not what should happen though. <laughs> oh, interesting. Oh, this is weird. Okay, so like, I see what's happening. The, the fun thing is that when you pause, when you pause the way that we're pausing, you actually pause the whole flipping universe. <laughs> so we need to make sure to like unpause the universe. Oh boy. Does it have a problem if I call dot resume when it's already resumed? I hope it doesn't. If it's playing, then I certainly don't need to call resume, I suppose. It doesn't look very disabled when it's disabled. So pick a new song in the middle of it. That approximately works. Aha, I see, Will. I, as of now, I am not in the zone still. Hello. How are you? I'm glad you're here. Oh, interesting. If you don't, if you fail to select a song, it freaks out, which I guess is fine. Although it would be nice if it didn't give me an error message. Be nice if it didn't give me an error message. Uh, don't get error message when the user doesn't select a song. How goes it? Uh, it's going great, my dude. What I'm trying to do right now is get through this list. And now anything after this question mark is pretty much optional or like doesn't involve things I'm going to do on stream. So like publishing this to itch.io when it's done, I don't need to stream that. That's not something I'm going to stream. And then this is like not even a thing. It's like I don't even know what it, what it means. But yeah, basically I'm just doing the last finishing touches 
and there's quite a lot of them on my music visualizer. And it's going good. So far I haven't like raged. There hasn't been like a uh, ridiculously difficult thing to resolve. Oh yeah, okay. Like one thing I can complain about is uh, this. Switch statements in JavaScript. Um, if you declare a variable inside your block, you can't declare that same variable in a different block. Unlike if it were a chain of if else statements. So if you're going to use the same variable name in two different blocks, you have to like declare it up here first or else JavaScript will get mad at you. I found that very frustrating. Um, oh yeah, and then like dealing with web audio is, <laughs> is completely insane. Uh, definitely completely insane. What did I just do? Okay. Okay. We're playing, we hit pause, we choose another song, what happens? Oh? What happens is it continues playing the old song. What happens if I hit play at this point? Please tell me it plays both. It plays both both songs now <laughs> what if I hit pause and pick a third song now I can play three songs at the same time I say with my hands in the air <laughs> oh my god <laughs> that's terrible <laughs> web audio what is happening Oh my god. What is going on? How does... I don't... How does that even work? Um... Alright, dude. That sounds great. Enjoy, enjoy your nap. I hope you have a great rest of your day. Thank you. I will figure this out. Okay, so. I think what I need to do is split out these cases a little bit. Maybe I can cheat and like reuse them a little bit, right? No, no, I don't think I can. <laughs> okay. So, if the state is none or ready, it's not paused. Therefore, we don't have to do audio context.resume. But if this is paused, then we need to do audio control.stop, stop the old song, and then resume time, and then resume time again. Is that the magic? Is that the secret sauce? Stop. 
pause, new song, play. You get, we got like a frame of the old one, visually. I don't know that we can fix that. And what if I choose a song while it's playing? It stops. I can hit play. That seems great. Pause. Play. Pause. Choose another song. Play. Choose a whole other song. Play. Pause play. Refresh. Okay. I think that works. I think that works. <laughs> oh, this is so silly. Oh my gosh, it's so silly. The fact that we have to call, like, uh, suspend and resume on the audio context and not the audio control. Holy crap, dude. Oh my goodness. Web audio. What is your deal? What is your deal, web audio? Holy crap. Okay, that works though. That's so incredibly silly. Okay. What was I what what no what was this to address? Oh, okay. This was disable the play button until... Okay, so realistically, the disable thing looks terrible, though. Can I just be honest? It looks terrible when it's disabled. Can I fix that right now? Okay. Um, yeah, because look, look at this, I call, I click a whole thing down mouse, up mouse, down mouse, up mouse. Oh, it's, uh, but it's disabled actually. Down mouse, up mouse, down mouse, up mouse. I don't care about that for the options menu, honestly, it doesn't really matter. In fact, the options menu should probably look different from the play button, the options button. Uh, but the play button needs to look like a button. Uh, I don't know how to say this. It needs to look like a button. Um, so how do you do, how do I express that with CSS? I think the way to express that with CSS is to make some special, um, What do I call the options button? The options button is at the bottom of my HTML. So ID options button. For ID options button, it gets a special CSS class, which, which I've already got. Okay. Um, but for general generic buttons, um, I want to style it differently. CSS style button when when clicked, when disabled on hover. All those things. How do I do that? Okay, I use colon hover. Button. 
button colon hover, what if I do button colon disabled? Aha. Button colon click. Press. Double colon? <laughs> what is this? What is CSS, dude? Oh my god. Okay. How about... I keep doing that. How about when you hover over the button... It turns like a slightly grayer background. It lights up, basically. Maybe that's a little bit too light. Yeah, just like barely perceptible. That's what you want, right? <laughs> um. Can I outline it? Outline. Outline width um, two, three pixels. That does nothing. What if I make outline width like 10 pixels? Still does nothing. Okay, maybe border, right? It's, it's a border. Not radius. Border three pixels. Holy crap, that's totally wrong. What on earth? <laughs> Look, all I did was border three pixels. I don't. That's terrible. <laughs> CSS change border line width on button. That's very specific. Okay, let's try border width, three pixels. Oh, look at that. Oh, ew, oh. It like, it moves it. Why does it? Why? Actually, I kind of know why it moves it though. It moves it because this is it's um, it's positioned like absolute. Uh, that's terrible. I could I could simultaneously shift the button. I don't want to do that. <laughs> I don't want to do that. Um, oh, I could. I could, when I increase the border width, I could reduce the padding, right? So it like the border comes in. So if I do border width four pixels, I need to reduce the padding by four everywhere in theory. So six minus two is four, 10 minus that's the opposite. So <laughs> 10 minus 4 is 6. Uh, 6 minus 4 is 2. 10 minus 4 is 6. Huh? Pretty smart thinking, right? Shoot. <laughs> Gosh dang it. Um. 
four was too much. Let's do two. Six, five, four, ten, nine, eight. Four, eight. Why, you ask? Why do you have to do it that way? Couldn't tell you. Not sure. Yeah, look at that. Doesn't that look like you're hovering over it? Although the fact that it's uh, it's like the same as the background color is probably not great, right? I don't know. Uh, radius. Background. Radius. How do I make the button round? Rounded? I don't know. I don't care. What should the button look like when it's disabled, though? Maybe I change the color of the text. From white to... Gray. So like... Oh, that looks pretty good. How do I, um, how do I make the button look 3D like it kind of did for a second there? Um, that would be nice, right? Or like for it to change when it's clicked in as well. What's the CSS for that? Let me look. Button width, button groups. Button active, button active. Button active. Button active. Um. How do I do that? <laughs> How do I do that? Uh, 
button, different border colors for each side. Each side can be set individually using border top color, border right color, etc. Okay, okay, let me try that. Because that's usually how they do the the 3D type effect is they make the top left and uh, the top and left a different color from the bottom and right. Border color top. Border top color. Border left color. Border bottom. This is not tedious at all. Border, right, color. Oh. So right now, it defaults to black. So maybe that's fine, right? Do I get a color picker? No? Okay, I claim this should do nothing. Okay, so that does nothing. But if I make the top left a different black, like a grayish, playing with the color picker is really frustrating. Oh my goodness. Save. Okay. Yeah, now see? Now when you click on it, it just needs to reverse that effect. I like it. I like it now. I like that. I like that a lot. Wow. Okay. I'm happy with that. I wish the choose file thing wasn't like the, uh, the black sheep of the, of the crew, you know, the crew, you got options button, <laughs> choose file button, play button, volume slider, that crew. That's pretty bad. Okay. I claim disable is ready. Make it look more obviously disabled. Yes. Yes. Fantastic. We're doing it. 
we're programming. This is not programming. <laughs> this, is, this is CSS. Why did I say that? I'm doing CSS. I'm not a programmer. Make the program not break when you try to switch to path mode and there's no path. Okay, I think I've handled that scenario. Oh, hold on a second. Okay, no, it looks good. I'm pretty sure the uh, the appearance doesn't update if you have your mouse over it and stationary. No, no, it does. Okay, never mind. Anyways, path not notably doesn't break. You know what occurs to me is that there actually should be another path option. Because circle has like min radius, max radius. should get some number you could set that makes the makes the waveform come out of the path a bit more you know Kind of like kind of the same thing for flat too. Like flat should have a should have a multiplier as well. What do you call that distance? I'm like gesturing with my hands right now, but you can't see that. What do you call that vertical distance from the center? You wouldn't call it offset, would you? No, that doesn't really explain what it's doing. Um, Extension, uh, extension amount. Yeah, that's something. So if I come over here. Okay, but anyways, uh, this feature is good. It's not, it's fine. 
<clears throat> and next, there's HTML canvas initialization stuff. Uh, starting to feel like I might want to call it a day. But maybe if I if I take a seat and stop standing, that will help me. Okay, one second. Because I'd like to keep going just a little bit more. We're so close, you know? Adjusting my monitor. Hold on a second. Okay. Uh, do the canvas the initialization in HTML. Okay, what is the current canvas initialization stuff? Is it just me? Is there a lot of code here? <laughs> There's so much code, holy crap. What do you put in between two canvas things? Look what happened. What a disaster. I will fix this though. Yes, very good. Okay, so let me make sure that the fade effect is still doing what it's supposed to do. Dark reader's off. Okay. 
Yeah, pretty sure it is. Pretty sure it's all good, basically. Yeah, it looks it looks all good. Okay. Next. Hmm. I don't think I want to give control of the width and height to the CSS, if I'm honest. There was two canvases there. I just deleted this line. There was two canvases there? That's a little bit weird. Maybe you can't add two with the same ID? No idea. No idea. Okay, I got distracted. What was I doing? <laughs> um,
on mouse move. On mouse move. Is there any reason to do it that way? Huh. I guess. Like, I, I also could have done it not in the JavaScript. Or, or yeah, like I, or, like, I could have done this in JavaScript, right? But it would have been document dot get element by ID, blah, blah, blah. Hmm. Hmm. What if I did hypothetically let CSS tell me it, huh? Actually, it wouldn't be CSS, would it? It would be the HTML. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, width. equals 800 pixels height equals 800 pixels and then I do I reverse this basically Okay, so let's like rerun everything and see what happens. In theory, it should all be good. It still looks like it's 800 by 800. Oh, interesting. So this just does nothing. It should be disabled, right? Shouldn't it be disabled in the, in the like, none? I'm confused now. Hopefully it doesn't matter if you hit it when there's nothing there. Okay, so that basically just works fine. If I refresh this and make this like a thousand by a thousand does everything basically just work again like i zoom out to account for that change the ui isn't gonna scale 
but huh it seems as though I may have hard coded something that's fine maybe we just go look for where we hard coded it right <clears throat> Find 800. Ta-da. Do I use these anymore? Well, I certainly don't use you. Uh, do I want... Hello. Uh, do I want you anymore? What are you up to? I use you here. But should I? Because X min and X max are basically that. Maybe I should just do like zero width. You know? Zero height. Any other uses? Uh, same deal, I guess. Zero width. Zero height. And then draw circular waveform is equal to. So I can change this to just width over two, right? Ooh, there's an interesting thought. I could change the... That seems like a feature. That might be a bonus later feature. I don't know. I mean, it should be so easy to add in theory. Okay, have I stopped using you guys? Yes, I have. Okay. Now, in theory, if I run this again, it should work with a thousand. Yeah, it works just the same. Oh, a radius of thousand is actually a lot. <laughs> Max radius like 700? Yeah, that looks cool. Oh, interesting. The fade effect can't apply to anything not in the uh, not in the 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 square because it's only programmed to copy what's in the square, not anything outside the square, which makes total sense. Because why would it? Why would I think to do that? It's just wasted, it's just wasted CPU. Uh, cool. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave this as it was at 800. 
but it's cool to know that it's like so easy to change the width and height because if if like say for example someone complains and they're like ew oh my god 800 by 800 i can't possibly live with less than a thousand pixels i can just be like done ship it okay uh so that's done now i claim Draw a line to connect the two ends of the circle in circle mode. Make all the text a little bit bigger. I kind of did that one already. Right? I made the text... To okay, let's... See. <laughs> there we go. Let's zoom back in. I actually did make the text kind of as big as I want it to be. Yeah, I think it's big enough, maybe. I do want to have space for one or two more options. So I think it's, uh, I could make it, I could make the text a little bit bigger. I could make it a little bit bigger. No, I can't cause I don't know how to do that. <laughs> um, indicates the desired height of the glyphs from the font for scalable fonts the font size is a scalar as a scale factor applied to the em unit of the font ew i have no idea for non-scalable fonts the font size is converted into absolute units and matched against uh blah 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 uh relative size uh 100 percent What does that do? Save. Okay, percentages do work. Okay, so let's have the body font size be, okay. The button the button font size is currently 100. And the body font size is also 100. So let's make the body font size 150%. That's a bit too big. That's a bit too big. Also, it broke the buttons, but not the input. Uh, let's do 110%. 120%. You know what I should do actually is uh, make the inputs not so wide. So first of all, can I make the standalone labels less or like wider? Let's give it like 160 pixels, 170 pixels. Okay. And then can I make these inputs less gigantic? Input width is equal to, I don't know, 200 pixels. That's actually larger, if you could believe it, 100 pixels. There you go. Except, oh God. Oh, it affects the radio buttons too. Um, Uh, is there a CSS selector for specifically CSS selector for number input or text input? Oh, yeah, 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 there is. Okay. So in theory, it should be input bracket type equals number. Save. It did it. 
It's done it. Victory. Is it just me or is the, the text inside the inputs really tiny? Uh, ooh, and the, the, our friend, the file selector in the background is also really tiny. So let's do, let's affect all inputs first and see how that works. Font size, 100%. Aha! Aha, look at that. It's, um, kind of broken. It's a little bit broken looking. I think 90% or something like that. And now if I could add a little bit of vertical, a little bit more vertical spacing. Between each options menu option, that's right. Yeah, I have that for margin top. Margin top, um, 12 pixels, 14. That looks pretty good. I kind of want to, hmm, I can't move this much more left in reality because this, the drawing mode, the longest, uh, the longest option. And now these guys are just pretty messed up looking. But it's not bad. It's not that bad. I think it's pretty good. I will have to come back and style, make a point to style the uh, style, improve the styling of the file selector, improve the style. Slider text. Add an option to hide all the UI, maybe. Allow switching to a new song somehow. Well, you just choose another file. That's not super elegant clearly, but I think it's good enough. Don't get error message when the user doesn't select a song. Yes, I need to do that. Okay, okay. All right. I think this is how I will leave it for tomorrow. This is how I will leave it for tomorrow. Yeah. This is how I'm going to leave it for tomorrow. Um, there's still a decent amount of work to be done still. Surpro amazingly. I <laughs> it's so annoying because it's just a bunch of little things. It's a bunch of little and yet quite important things that each just takes so long. Oh my goodness. So I think we're going to need another stream of this. I'm not sure it's going to be a full stream. But we definitely need another stream of this. I'm loving this, though. I'm loving that we got the buttons looking kind of nice. And I wish we were using a different font. I'll make a note of that as well. Uh, change the change the font, preferably one that doesn't look so formal.
those three together need to be moved and stuff. Yeah. All right. Uh, I'm going to call it quits for today. I should see you tomorrow, though. Thank you for watching, and farewell.